So, welcome back, guys. My name is Bill Smith. Another episode of Uncle Bo TV. I got my brother Jojo Cruz here in the building uh, on a podcast. Actually, we can't even be around each other. My boy about to play some football. But uh, yeah, yes, sir. what's what's up, Joe? How you doing, bro? Uh chilling, chilling, bro. Living my best life. Yeah. How how's how's your day so far, man? Uh, pretty straight. Uh, just been chilling. Been chilling. Okay. Okay. So, man, I'm about to get into this little mental health thing, man. It's not going to take too long because I know you got a couple things to do. Uh, but, yeah, man, like, first things first, dog. Like, what was growing up like? I, it was it was straight. It was chill. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of transitions in my life. You, you know what I mean? Uh, I grew up very well off. Then some things happened, and then I ended up in – not so good neighborhood mm-hmm. in uh, South Florida, and I. It's funny I didn't even notice this. This particular episode was about mental health, mm-hmm. but I do. I was, technically I was diagnosed with a uh, with ADHD, mm-hmm. and as a kid growing up in that time, like nobody knew how to deal with that shit. So their first instinct is, like, if you do go in and they diagnose you with that, the first thing that they do is they put put you on medicine. And as a kid, you don't know what it is. It makes you feel weird, all this other shit. But when you grow up, you find out that this medicine that you were taking is, like, some real, like, some hard shit. Yeah. And it, it puts you in a weird, weird space when you're when you're on it um do you remember the name of it yeah uh ritalin uh there's an there's another one uh adderall not adderall uh, ritalin and then there's another one but that's like the uh the name brand yeah but like like how did that make make you feel like as a child I would always tell people it's like putting on, you know, those blinders that that horses wear. Yeah, it, it's almost like having those on, mm-hmm. and it decreases your appetite like crazy. I was so skinny as a kid, and it just it just fucks with your mood. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're like always down. You you're not like a kid. Kids are always, you know, I mean, running around having fun and shit. You don't really want to do any of that. Oh, okay. So, like, a little depression, a little eating less and stuff like that? Yeah, usually, it, luckily it didn't happen with me, but usually when kids that age are on Ritalin, they usually they usually back it with antidepressants as well. Mm-hmm. So now you're not only hooked on this other shit, you're hooked on antidepressants. Yeah. So now you already, you're, you know, 10, 12 years old, and you're already in a cycle. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's fucking crazy because you go into the doctor. They're hey, he's still, you know, he's still a little angsty. Let's just up his dosage. And then really, all I needed as a kid, bro, was somebody that that understood where I was coming from. And I don't blame my mom. You know, she didn't know no better. She's right. raising me the best she can. And then doctors are telling her like, "Yo, this 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 will help." Bro, that's crazy, bro. Because like, what it yeah. is that they'll they'll give you some meds before they sit down and actually talk with you and uh exactly that's some bullshit it really is exactly oh yeah for sure and the funny part is i didn't know that this was some crazy shit that i was taking until i was an adult i was at a club and i'm at a rave or whatever and somebody comes up to me like yo i got adderall what the fuck you studying for a test motherfucker like what what you want me to do with that and they're like, no, nah, no, nah, you take it and you get fucked up. And then I was like an epiphany, like, oh, shit. Like, yo, I was taking some real shit. This was yeah. I wasn't taking aspirin. I was like, this is some real shit that I was it's taking. Like they had you drugged the fuck up over something that you yeah. sat down to talk with somebody about. Exactly. And then certain um, certain uh, symptoms that I was I was feeling, I didn't understand what they were as a child, but then... 
I understood it from looking at it as 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 looking at that as a drug, then it all kind of made sense. Because when I stopped taking it, I was sick. I was, you know, what I mean, I feel good. I was having fucking withdrawals, bro. Yeah. Like that. That as a, you know what I mean. You don't think like that as a kid, though. Isn't that fucking? That's fucking insane. Yeah. Like again, yeah. I don't blame my mom. She just. She was just in that situation, and they told her, like, hey, we got this new shit that'll help you. Mm. And she didn't know what to do. So it's like, even though, like, like, how old was your mom at the time that you were, you know, diagnosed? I, uh, I don't know. I know I was, like, I, I got diagnosed pretty young, like, five, six. Okay. And they was, started putting me on that medicine. Her, was, was I, I don't know. pretty young? How old she was. No, no, she's 60 now, so I want to say maybe 40s, 50s. Oh, okay, okay. Most likely 40. Okay. Um, My math skills aren't up to date. Yeah. So how old are you now? Let's do the math now. Uh, shit. You got to I am 20. I, yeah. <laughs> that's how you know you get old. I am 29. <laughs> okay. So that's what I'm saying. So your mom had to be like, you know, about 38 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, 30s, 40s. 30s, yeah, about there. Um, but you know what? What is your true, you know, thought process on you know mental health as a whole? Because we are in May, you know what I'm saying? Mental health. I really health think that right. Like, my you know apology. What? What'd you say? I said it's Mental Health Awareness Month in May. So like, what's your what's your thought on that? I think, a, a, like, I, I definitely think conversations need to be had, you feel me? A lot of this shit is, and a lot of the, a lot of the shit is, is out and open. Nobody's quiet about shit no more. So if somebody's feeling a certain way, you always hear about it. And then when everybody ignores it, then when some go down, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, I had, this came out of nowhere. Yeah. I had no idea this was happening. Everybody always looked, they, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you a crazy-ass story I read. Mm -hmm. So this guy, um, uh, wherever he is, he always goes around and says hello, and, and anybody who he passes, he's very nice to, and shit like that. Because when he tried to, to, to commit suicide, he went on an hour walk just looking for a reason not to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Looking for some some kind of kindness or someone that gave a fuck about him living or dying, dude. Just a sign anywhere. He he walked around for an hour and finally got it. Someone just saying hello. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something as simple as that could save someone's life. Just not being an asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But the writing's all over the wall. You just gotta you just gotta look at it. And that's all it takes is just time to talk, man. That's it. You know. Real shit conversation, bro. And as, like like I said, as a kid, if somebody would have just sat me down and talked to me, like, hey, you know, instead of doing this, why don't you try this? Yeah. So does does any of that, you know, coming up as a youth, like, does that impact, you know, how you are now as a father? Oh, that's right, I am a father. <laughs> uh not so much because he's he's still a baby. So I mean, you don't really see too much personality in a baby. I mean, a little bit of spurts here and there, but you kind of always chalk it up to him being a baby. If he's a little, you know what I mean? If he's yeah. a little uh, angsty one day, or if he's a little excited the next, I mean, you just kind of chalk it up to him being a baby. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think more of that will come later on when he turns into like an actual. I don't want to say turn into an actual person. He is a person. Yeah, he becomes an uh, Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, a walking, talking, thinking. Mm -hmm. So, like, how, how, old is, how old is your son now? Uh, he is two. Two, okay. And you were diagnosed at what age? Five. Five, okay. Yeah, I believe somewhere around there. So, kindergarten ish. Okay. So, like, what exactly, you know, are you going to do? Like, you know, God forbid, um, 
you know, ADHD is, is going to him, right? God forbid. Yeah. Um, but like, what are, what are the steps that you're going to take? Are you going to be like, do you feel like you're going to be overbearing? Or are you going to like let his let him do his thing, you know, and then step in when need be? The <clears throat> so when I was in uh, middle school, I did uh, have this really good guidance counselor that gave me little tricks to help with certain situations. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If something on your body is moving, you can concentrate on that to keep everything from uh, wondering. You know what I mean? Something as simple as uh, tapping your finger on the desk or moving your knee or something like that. So I would share those tricks with him. Okay. And if they help, hell yeah. But if they don't, I would definitely be proactive because... Um, it's it's easy to just do the easy way and like here's some medicine this will make you feel better you know what I mean okay. okay so like have you ever like you know researched that like whether it was like a uh, hereditary and it is it is yeah. hereditary yeah I have it my father before me and I'm assuming my father before him or his father before me okay but they dealt with it a different way back then. So when I was growing up, that's when all this shit was coming out to help with this. So this was all like a new thing. So even now, I don't even think they're quick to... Because they diagnosed me at like five or six. That's very young to diagnose somebody with like a be uh, behavioral disorder. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you could... You could, I mean, you know me. You could see that I'm still affected. Like, sometimes we'll have a conversation and I'll fucking space out. I'm there with you, but yeah. I'm fucking paying attention to some other shit. Hell yeah. Man. So, like, okay. So, like, right now, like, what is it? Like, what's, what's your whole feel of, you know, being a dad now? Oh, it's awesome, man. It really is. It changes. It changes your perspective on a lot of shit. Yeah. Like, I've. I never. You always hear people say like, "Yo, I'll kill for my son. I'll do this and I'll do that." Until, your son takes his first breath, or your kid, or your daughter, or whatever, takes his first breath. You don't. You don't understand that until you really get to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as he took his first breath and he looked me in the eyes, I was like, yeah, I'd fucking, yeah, I'd kill somebody. I'd kill two people. And I'd go to sleep the next day. Yeah. I'd be fine with it. I would take my heart out and give it to him if I knew that he would live on. You know what I mean? It's, it's very crazy. Mm. It's a crazy feeling to have about another person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't feel that way about certain family members. That's true. Oh. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Dude, I would give this kid my last breath. I feel you. So, quick question. Um, are you, are you, you still with his mom? No, I am not. Okay. Okay. Let, let me ask you, let me ask you about that. Like, like, what is that? Like, is it like easy to co-parent? Is everything, everybody getting along? How's that? Well, it's, it's, well, nothing, nothing is ever easy. When it comes to you know stuff like that, Amen. Amen. but uh, you, the best thing to do is just you know try your best and then keep the kid first. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So we, I mean, uh, this Mother's Day, I took her out to uh, to breakfast and and you know we went to the park together with the kid with our son and stuff like that. So we tried to keep it together because it's just good for a kid to see you know. That's what's up. Uh, Mother and father mm -hmm. together, you know, coexisting. Yeah. So is it like it's just one kid? I just have one that I know about. Okay, that you know about. Look at that. They call what they call daddy's babies, mama's babies. That's what they call. Them. Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> a hoe. I was a hoe. Look, man, don't be no rolling stone out here, cause. But nah, for real. Uh -huh. um, but it's 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 amazing to see you as a father. You know what I'm saying? Like just a little snippet that I saw. You know, you and your son's bond. It, it seems pretty special. But like, oh yeah, it is. Yeah, but it's like you know, at the same time, like 
um, I don't know, cause like you know, did you did you grow up with your pops? You grew up with yours. Uh, uh yes. Yes, like like you you live yeah, with yeah. them kind of thing, or was it like weekends? Uh, well, now I have I have a great relationship with my father, but yes. um, there was a time where. He wasn't. He wasn't around. Or he wasn't available. He wasn't available. Right. There you go. Uh, and my mom had to do it all, and she's she's just an amazing woman for keeping that. You know what I mean? Keeping all that shit together. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how these women do it, but they, they do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They figure a way. But uh. But yeah, I I didn't really so. So I, I, it's like super important for me to be there because of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, there can't be no gaps. Right. So it affected you a little bit, like as far as like. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. course. I do. With, line what, I said it did. So like, in what ways? Where it's just like you know, um, you see yourself being like, nah, I don't, I don't want to be like that because you know it reminded you of, you know, your dad or being absent. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, like like I said, it, it affected me, but not as much. It just I, I just know how important it is because I mean, growing up where I grew up, you you know what I mean. Not every household, including mine, had both in the house. Right. Sometimes it was a grandma. Sometimes it was aunt uncle you know what i mean sometimes it wasn't even the real parents you know what i mean shit like that yeah so that just that growing up in that that area and and even like i said even in my household it wasn't it wasn't uh both weren't available mm -hmm. i mean it takes so a village. i just want to make sure that yeah. say it again it takes a village to raise a child you know what i mean uh, oh hell yeah yeah I, I was raised by nothing but women you feel me so like stuff like that really affected me to this day. You feel me? Um, but you see what I'm saying? So, and I'm sure when you have a, when you have a child, yeah, you're gonna yeah, day, bro. make sure that there isn't any gaps. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't know how to tie a tie. I I don't shave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit, little shit like that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna make sure. Like I remember uh, before my son was born, I was trying to learn like something, or anything like magic, or card tricks, mm -hmm. just something that I can, when he gets older, I can be really good at so I can impress him on a continuous basis. Right. So something as small as that, because something that always stuck with me as a kid, is my dad knew this little, as an adult, if you see it, so it's fucking stupid, but it was a coin trick. Yeah. And he would make a coin disappear, and that always stuck with me. Like that was like the best shit in the world, you know what I mean? So I want that with my son. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you something, because like you know, you did, you dipped and dabbled in, in a couple of things. So let me ask you, like, would you say like dabble and I dabble? Yeah, you know, like growing up, like would you say you had like different phases of life? Like you had like your emo phase or like your lit phase, your, your deep oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay, so like what? <laughs> Cause you know I see you change your look. hair color a couple times. You know what I'm saying. So it's like yeah. I, I want to know like, what was teenage life like? Like what was that teenage to twenty? Like what what was that? Yeah, t teenage, I was a little, I was a little, a little wanna be thug. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, I don't have no. Luckily, I don't have no pictures from that. Yeah, but but explain, that elaborate on that. Elaborate what you mean. Uh, I. I grew up in an age where we would, like, there was a lot of fighting. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, we would we would fight for no reason. There wouldn't have to be a lot of reason for us to be fighting on some shit. Okay. You know what I mean? Just because today's Tuesday, I'm going to fight. Mm, some uh, alternative student shit, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. We was, we was, we was, it was a little wild. It was a little wild. And, and, you would go to other cities and fight motherfuckers just because. 
Yeah, but this is the thing. Like, were you like so? Like, you were like in the skateboarding, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like, cause I knew some guys like that over in like Port Tampa. You know what I'm saying? Like South Bay and all of that. They they would be the same way. Pearsons, different hair colors, skateboarding. You know what I'm saying? But you know, don't try the gangster. You feel me? They'll whack your ass. Oh nah. skateboard. That's the craziest. Oh thing yeah. Ever. So, so that's the funny part is that that came after I was I was already I was in like my twenties mm. when that that hair and stuff like that that, that came. Oh, take me partying. through that. Take me through that. Oh, the partying! I tell you what, the most fun I ever had in my life. But here's the thing: is like I'm all partied out now. Mm-hmm. So if somebody asks me like, "Yo, you want to go to the club?" I was like, "Nah, I'm good. I am done with that shit." I am all partied out, bro. Oh man! Like what? Like okay, so like, what you gonna tell your son when you grow? Like when he grows up? Like, ex- explain. Like, what are some of the stories you gonna actually tell him? Oh, not many, not many that I can tell him. So what one? <laughs> give, give me one. Give me one story. <laughs> not many, bro. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of bad shit, man. I was, I was, I was pretty bad, man. One that you can remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing. The, uh, it's like I said, it's a lot of fighting stories, bro. Like I, I fought me and my homie fought a whole football team, uh, in a different city because uh-huh. they thought we we stole some shit from our from their bag. But it's just going to different cities and what, and what city? Into what it city with, was this though? So this is Hollandale. So we would go into neighboring cities like Carver Ranches and, and Hollywood, and we would start bullshit. <laughs> How are you? It's like How rival. How are you allowed? Could you say oh, it's, oh, Okay. Man? Here's the thing, though. This is before all that shooting shit. Like, nobody had no guns like that. That's, that's what's crazy. We would fight. That's what I was saying. We would fight for real. Yeah. And then, then all that shooting shit happened, and then we... We were like, nah, bro, you know what I mean? A fight ain't worth losing your whole life over. Mm-hmm. And then a few of my homies, you know, didn't make it. So that was that was it for me with that shit. Wow. Son, I would have I would have never thought that. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm saying, like, I know you still had like that that dope spirit, but at the same time, like I never really would have thought that, you know, you you was out there, you know, scrapping up like that, son. I ain't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I throw down as I have to. I haven't fought in like fucking years. I don't plan on it to be honest. That's good. Keep drinking your Corona and smoking your Colts, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm lying, just relax from here. A little bit of work. Yeah. Jeez. But yeah, man. Like, hold on, because I had a, I had a couple other questions to ask. Because like. I know we probably oh. went over our little twenty minute time, bro, but we just talking, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, you good, you know, bro. Hell yeah. So I'm here, bro. You told me that, you know, it wasn't that long ago, you know, you started really playing football, right? Like, what has that, you know, done as far as like um, cause you know, uh football is pretty much all we got, you know, as far as like uh blacks and browns pretty much. You know what I'm saying? As far as like Getting along, because, you know, most of the time in other sports, you know, we don't really click, you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll see, like, Spanish play basketball in the other court or whatever the case may be. But, like, this is, like, the first time where it's just, like, this sport right here, I know we bond for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what was that like? I was actually telling my big mama story. Um, They were – we are on the field. We're playing a game. So, this is semi-pro. So, we're padded up. And um, I tell this dude, the dude in front of me, the guard, so I play D tackle. Mm-hmm. I tell the guard in front of me, I saw that his mouthpiece was down. So I tell him, I'm like, yo, put your mouthpiece in. And he's like, all right. And he puts it in kind of confused. And as soon as he they call hike, I take my fucking helmet and I smash it into his fucking mouthpiece, bro. As soon as down to hike, boom! Like on some vicious shit, <laughs> for real. But, it, like, football is the only sport that, like, you can literally be out there trying to hurt someone. And afterwards, there's this certain, like, camaraderie 
and a certain love for the sport and it's all love after which is fucking amazing i've never like tried to hurt someone like really tried to hurt you i'm really trying to put you out yeah i really am i'm trying i'm trying to put you on that bench that's my goal pretty much and afterwards bro hug it up you you know what i mean come through like yo you played a good ass fucking game bro like yeah bro good shit you know what i mean like really like hugging dudes and 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 keeping it keeping it G, bro. Like I I, I love that shit. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I love most about it. Yeah, because I mean, like sometimes like you'll get like some hot head guys who like come out there. Oh and, yeah, like, everything just spicy. But after the game, it's after it's the game, it's all chill, bro. It's done, bro. I, it, it, and that's the only that's the only time I've ever seen that. Like somebody get to that level. Usually in basketball, it's gonna be a fight. Yeah, well, totally. In any other sport, baseball, you you spike somebody with the ball or whatever. Mm-hmm. It, I'm running to that fucking mound, bro. Now, I, I'm, you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm running there, bro. I'm going to see you in that field, bro. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. In football, it could be whatever, however far you want to take it. And then after that fucking whistle and there's a winner and there's a loser, it's fucking done. For real, bro. Cause... And I fucking love that shit about it. I've never played football before. This is like literally my first time ever playing. I fucking love it. Yeah, I feel like it, it should be a, a sport that's bigger than what it is at this moment. Because I mean, like they're already talking about playing flag football as an Olympic sport. So I mean, yeah, I you heard know what I'm that. saying? A nap on a national platform, bro. You you got to think about it, bro. That can end. That look, flag football could end racism, son. Come on, son. Don't need, don't even play like that. Like, think about it, bro. Like, if we all play in this damn sport that causes us to knock each other over and then help help you up, be like, oh, yo, my bad, dog. I was just trying to get to the ball. You feel me? Because at the same time, you want to keep, you know, you want to keep them safe, but you want to let them know, nigga, I'm here. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. That, oh, yeah. that's really why I love the sport. And, like, on an international oh, yeah. level, come on, son. You can't beat that. Yeah. But basketball, bro, you get dunked on, bro, I want to throw hands. I'm, that's what I'm saying, bro. Every I'm sport, saying, it's a little bit different. I, through my life, I've played damn near every sport that you can think of, mm-hmm. like on on a on an actual team and actually played. I mean, hockey, tennis, soccer, basketball. I'm t- baseball. I'm, I'm telling you, bro. There is fights in baseball and hockey. Don't even get me started. We throw a hand. Oh my god, they get paid. And for football that. is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get paid for that. But I was, I throw heads. So I'll give it that. But in football, bro, that's, that's, that's same thing with this flag shit. It's so different. Hell yeah, man. Oh boy, it's bro. like especially this league. It's like it's like a big ass family. Yeah, but that's the thing. It was just like the first time I actually played. You know, with the actual team. You know, on a league. That kind of thing. It was just like everybody had like so many different personalities. Like even personalities with, that you wouldn't necessarily like just be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna chill with you." But like it like clicked for some reason. You feel me? Like even the down days, it, yeah, it was still like, "All right, bro, I still fuck with you." You know? Yeah, yeah, of course. It was it was a bit of uh, controlled chaos. Yeah, hell yeah. That, that's that's a fact. I think that's probably like the best way to put it: controlled chaos. Yeah, <laughs> that's the nicest way to put it. I have. So many other words for it, but we'll stick with control chaos. For real, man. But yeah, I like. I don't know, like um, man. Because I'm I'm trying to think because it's it's just a lot that's going on, you know, out here in the world. Especially like you know with these celebrities. You feel what I'm saying? And it's like I think that like one of the you know, the people that I talk about the most, especially, like, with mental health, is Kanye. You know what I'm saying? So, My man is what, is it, what is it, you know, what What about Kanye do you think keeps him going? Like, do you think that he is publicity stunt after publicity stunt, or do you think that, like, he's a celebrity that's actually, you know, going through something that's for the world to see? No, no, I, I think he needs, I, I think he needs some help, bro. Like, be real. I will say though, Kanye West will forever be my top five favorite rappers of all time, ever, always. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
like always. He'll forever be in my list. I don't give a damn. Right. But it's almost like it's almost like AB, bro. It's like like I said before. It's like it, it'll always be right in your face. Always, it'll always be right in your face. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. Like, um, there was a kid. I, I, I don't know how severe getting into it, but there was a kid that uh, that came into work. He worked for a, a supermarket. Mm-hmm. Came into work, shot his employees, and then shot himself. But prior to that, he made for two weeks. He made videos about how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it making sign-off videos like, hey, today's my last day because I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do. It's always there, you know what I mean? Yeah. People never hide shit like that. They don't keep a secret and then do something about it. They always, they're always up front about it. But you got to understand, I feel like a lot of these people who are going through things like that, like they give them signs or they, they'll say like, hey, I'm going to kill you or whatever the case may be. You might write it on a paper exactly. or something like that, like just a light threat. And, like, people will just laugh that shit off, and then Buddy come back with the shoddy. So, I don't know, man. That, that's, that's what I'm saying. That, I'm just saying, don't be surprised when somebody does something crazy and they told you that they were going to do it. Same shit with, uh, with Kanye and A.B. Like, there's something wrong with them, and you can see it. They're broadcasting the fucking shit in front of everybody yeah. to where everyone can see it. Bro, Kanye told that dude that he said some fucked up shit to that. Uh, P. Davis. Yo, you oh, said he, yo, like when you call a man skeet, that's a whole nother ball game, bro. You just, just totally disrespect yeah. that man. Yeah, he oh, was saying some foul shit. That's crazy. <laughs> but but that's what I'm saying. You you broadcasting it in front of the whole world, bro. And if he does something crazy, you're gonna be like, oh, where you know what I mean? Where did this come from? Hey. Oh, I bet you've been doing this shit since. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's been telling you about it. You just don't listen. Hey man, I just I, I don't know, bro. Like I just can't take I just can't take the fact that people just seem like they're just sitting around and looking at them do crazy shit. They just lose their fucking yeah. mind, you know? It's it's kind of scary, yeah. bro. Like it's almost like on some like big get out shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like everyone oh, yeah. around oh, them yeah. know they need fucking help, but no one is taking them seriously, bro. No one is taking them to go see help. See, yeah, I, I was just about to say that too. It, it, like it, don't if I was gonna blame anybody, I wouldn't blame I wouldn't blame Kanye, I wouldn't blame A B, I wouldn't blame none of these motherfuckers. Who I will blame is the motherfuckers that's around you that's allowing you to do this shit. You know what I mean? If you are real with me, if, if you my homie and you you for real down with me, you wouldn't let me do no fuck shit. You know what I mean? If you saw me at a club or outside and I was saying something that that's not becoming of me. And something I shouldn't be saying out loud, and you didn't jerk my T-shirt and be like, "Yo, that that ain't your, you know, you know what I mean? That that ain't that ain't your real homie. You no. need to stop fucking with him." Because <laughs> what... I mean, like even AB, like I just never seen somebody just throw away millions like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like there was some other shit though. Of there course, there is some bullshit going on too. in the NFL. But I mean, I'm saying like, of course, there's some other shit too. But I'm saying like, if if your brother Mike Evans, right? If he come up to you and he trying to tell, like, hey, yo, like, hey, just relax, whatever the case may be. And if anything, I'm pretty sure if you tell the Tom, like, hey, yo, my ankle, whatever, they can use you as a decoy. That's my, That was my whole thing. You feel me? It's like this was the opportunity for you to show, like, whether you were down for the team or you were going to be selfish. And he chose his own route. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, that's how I feel okay. about that. But at the same time, I, I, CTE is an issue. Yes, and and it just it just the whole thing, man. It, it just felt like there was something else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That he wasn't maybe allowed to say or didn't want to say. It just felt like there was. Every time he told the story, it just felt like he was skipping out a part. You know what I mean? Well, he did. Like there was a little gap in between every time that he told the story about why he did. But do you? But that's what I'm saying. Do you think it's something that he does? Or do you think he blames it on, like, you know, the team that he's on? I, I think it. I think it was the NFL. I, I really do. I think they're they're pushing it to make him seem crazy, and he's feeding into it by by saying anything. Mm. If he would have just dipped, 
and took his shit off and left, it would have just been like, oh, he's just saying fuck you. You know what I mean? Right. But it's all that other shit that's like, oh, no, this motherfucker crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Hell yeah. But hey, so that, that, that's what I'm saying. All I'm going to say is that, you know, prayers go out to him. You know, CT is a real thing. Mental health is, you know, I hope it gets better because, you know, Antonio Brown, bro, he need, he need prayer. He need help. He need love. Oh, yeah, for sure. Him and he's so Kanye. fucking raw, bro. Him and Kanye, man. Him and Kanye. So, um, yeah, man, that's Joe, that's all I got for you, brother, man. I, I appreciate you for hopping on, dude. I promise you. I really appreciate this. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, no. be fine. Hell, yeah, man. This has been another episode of Uncle Bowl TV, man. I'm your boy, Zoe Smith. Peace. But, um.